PepsiCo stock, ticker symbol PEP. This stock is up 3% year to date, which is quite interesting since the S&P 500 is down 21%. One of the reasons why people love PepsiCo is because of the dividends. 49 years of dividend growth is very impressive to say the least. PepsiCo has a 52 week high of $183 and a 52 week low of $153. Right now they are at $178, so almost at the 52 week highs. And does this mean that PepsiCo stock is still a buy? Well in this video I'm going to show you real quickly what PepsiCo does. The most recent earnings, the historical returns, the fundamental analysis, dividends and in the last part I'm giving you my price target to see if they are a buy or not. And I think you definitely want to see that part so make sure to watch until the end. And I'm also very excited to see what you guys think about this stock so please let me know your thoughts in the comments. My name is Thomas and this is Thomas Invest. I'm an investor looking for great stocks at great prices. So what does PepsiCo do? PepsiCo is a global leader in snack and beverages. Owning well-known household brands including Pepsi, Mountain Dew, Gatorade, Lay's, Cheetos and Doritos among others. The company dominates the global savory snacks market and also ranks as the second largest beverage provider in the world just behind Coca-Cola. On the 12th of October PepsiCo did report earnings, where they beat on EPS and revenue. And to be honest this looks pretty solid and the stock went up roughly 10% after the earnings report. If we dive in the earnings report we see that net revenue is up from 20.1 to 21.9 representing a 9% growth year over year. And to be honest that's quite impressive for a company this big. But there are some more interesting things happening there. Crito Lay North America, the second biggest segment representing roughly 25% of the revenue, is up 20% year over year. But the biggest segment, PepsiCo Beverages North America, representing 30% of the revenue, is growing at only 3% year over year. Which in a way makes sense since this is already the biggest segment and it's harder to grow at a high pace when you are this big. Nevertheless, keep an eye on this number. The third biggest segment, Europe, is nearly flat year over year, which concerns me a bit. Latin America is growing in high amounts as well, and it's the same story with Quaker North America. But the other segments seem to be lagging behind. In terms of net profit, frito is by far the biggest segment and grew 17% year over year, which is very nice. But keep in mind that revenue grew at 20% year over year. And to be honest, I think it's a bit tricky that frito is representing almost 50% of the operating profit. Meaning, when growth slows down with this segment, PepsiCo might be having a big problem. Overall, operating profit is up at only 6% versus the revenue growth of 9%. Margins are decreasing a bit. The last thing that I want to discuss is the guidance and outlook. For the fiscal year of 2022, the company now expects to deliver 12% organic revenue growth, previously 10%, and 10% core constant currency EPS growth, previously 8%. Total cash returns to shareholders of approximately 7.7 .7 billion, comprised of dividends of 6.2 billion, and share repurchases of 1.5 billion. So this looks all good to me. And now that we know more about PepsiCo and the recent earnings, it's time to check the historical results to see what happened there. I decided to include the S&P 500 as a benchmark, since this is one of the easiest ways to invest. Just buy an S&P 500 ETF and wait. Next to that I added Coca-Cola, ticker symbol KO, Keurig Dr. Pepper, ticker symbol KDP, and Monster Beverages, ticker symbol MNST. On the 5 year chart we see that every competitor did beat the S&P 500 except for Coca-Cola stock. PepsiCo returned 87% versus the S&P 500 returning 59%. KDP had the highest return with almost 200%. On the one year chart it's getting quite interesting. All stocks have beaten the S&P 500 with quite a margin. The S&P 500 returned minus 18%, while PepsiCo had the highest return together with Monster 11 to 12%. On the 6 month chart it's pretty much the same story. All stocks did beat the S&P 500 again, but Coca-Cola didn't do great either with minus 7.5% return. 
Monster had the highest return with 13%. On the one month chart, all stocks beat him the S&P 500 again, except for KDP. PepsiCo had again the highest return. So overall, PepsiCo did very well and had beaten the S&P 500 on all charts and seemed to deliver every time. But how about the future and the valuation? Is PepsiCo stock a buy? Well, let's check the fundamentals of this stock. But first, if you made it this far into the video, I want to thank you a lot for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe and in return you'll receive similar analysis to this one every week. Let's continue by diving into the fundamentals. PepsiCo is a 246 billion market cap company making them one of the larger companies in the US and especially in the industry. PE ratio is at 25 right now, which could indicate that they are overvalued. Later in this video I will show you my 3 price targets for PepsiCo, so make sure to watch until the end. PepsiCo has a trailing 12 month revenue of 83 billion, and in this graph we see that revenue went up quite a lot recently. Between 2012 and 2020, revenue was nearly flat. But when the lockdown periods occur, revenue went up big time. The question is for how long, so definitely keep an eye on this number. Net income is at 9.7 billion, which gives us a profit margin of 11.6%, which is slightly below the 5 year average of 11.7%. And to be honest, this is something that we saw in the earnings as well. Revenue is growing at 9% year over year, but operating profit is growing at only 6%, meaning a gap of 3%. This could lead to lower margins in the end, so keep an eye on this number as well. And in this graph we see that EPS is going up and down a lot. It's not very steady and consistent, so that's something that I don't like. But it has to be said that in the long run it's going up, so that's the good part. In this graph we see the price to sales ratio, which is increasing quite a lot in the past couple of years. Which is of course something that I don't like. I prefer 2 or lower, but it also depends on the industry of course. Beverage companies tend to have higher price to sales ratios. The industry average is around 5, so PepsiCo is below the industry average, which is a good thing. The price to book ratio is also increasing a lot, and too high in my opinion. So keep an eye on this number as well. Right now it indicates that this stock is overvalued. And it's also the same story with the price to free cash flow. It's increasing a lot, and it's too high in my opinion. For a big company like PepsiCo, I want to have this number at least at 20 or lower. Right now, it's indicating that PepsiCo stock is overvalued. Next up are the analysis expectations. For the EPS, they expect to see high single digits in the coming years, which is great in my opinion. But for the revenue growth, things start to slow down to low single digits. So this is definitely something that we have to keep in mind with creating the 3 price targets and assumptions later in this video. Next up are the return on assets, sitting at 6.7%, which is below my 10% minimum. But keep in mind that in this industry, return on assets are lower in general, so I don't worry that much. Return on equity is at 54%, which looks all good to me. And the most important number here, return on invested capital, is at 9.5% which is pretty good, but it's below my 10% minimum. The good part is that it's slightly above the 5 year average and seems to be very steady over a longer period of time. PepsiCo has a current ratio of 0.92, which looks really good to me. You want this number below 1.5, especially for these type of companies. Another thing that I don't like is the cash to debt ratio. I prefer companies who can pay down at least 33% of their total debt with the current cash position. Right now, PepsiCo has 6.7 billion in total cash while total debt is at 39 billion, so this doesn't look that good to me. So it's very important that free cash flow is growing, since this is used to pay down debt of course, but also to buy back shares, do acquisitions, pay dividends and a lot of things. And in this graph we see that free cash flow went up and down quite a lot. So I don't like this graph since I prefer a bit more steady and pattern. But to be honest, since 2019, free cash flow went up again. So we need to keep a close eye on this number. But things seem to get better. Shares outstanding are decreasing quite a lot over the long run. But in the past 5 years, PepsiCo bought back roughly 3% of the shares outstanding. And to me, that seems to be quite the right decision. Based on what we have seen so far, 
PepsiCo looks overvalued and you don't want them to buy back expensive shares. On the other hand, by buying back shares, EPS will go up and lowers the PE ratio. Next to that, your ownership in the company increases and it's more easier to maintain and increase the dividends. And since we're talking about dividends anyway, dividend yield is sitting at 2.5%, which is pretty decent. Annual payout is at $4.6 a share and payout ratio is at almost 67%, which is too high in my opinion. I prefer companies with 50% or lower. Right now they have only 33% left in cash to pay down debt, buy back shares, do acquisitions and all other things. So this payout ratio is something that I don't like. The 5 year growth rate is at 7% and to me this looks pretty good. Dividend yield is already pretty decent and payout ratio is too high. So 7% growth rate seems to be good enough. PepsiCo grew the dividends for 49 years in a row, which is very impressive of course. Overall, I think from a dividend perspective, PepsiCo might be very attractive. But what about the value play? Is PepsiCo stock a buy at current prices? Well, let's check the three price targets that I created using the Everything Money software, which is one of the best tools out there. I'm using a low, mid and high assumption to get the three price targets, starting off with revenue growth. According to the analysis expectations, we are going to see low single digit revenue growth. So that's why I'm filling in 1% for the low assumption, 3% for the mid assumption and 5% for the high assumption. Margins seem to be very steady over a longer period of time. So I'm filling in 10%, 11% and 12%. For the free cash flow margin, I'm filling in 7%, 8.5% and 10%. PE ratio and price to free cash flow are very high right now. And for a slow growing company like PepsiCo, I want to pay a lower multiple here, since there's not a lot of growth potential. So that's why I'm filling in 16, 17 and 18. My desired annual return is 12.5%, since I can get an easy 10% average annual return with owning an ETF. Right now, PepsiCo is at $178. I hit analyze, and we see only red numbers. We have a low price target of $47 to $67, a mid price target of $68 to $88, and a high price target of $96 to $115. Meaning, according to these numbers, PepsiCo is overvalued. My final conclusion on this company is that the brand itself is great. The stock is a different story. Of course, there are a lot of good parts in terms of fundamentals, but the valuation is just not correct right now. To me, PepsiCo stock is overvalued and needs to drop quite a lot to become an interesting value play. From a dividend perspective, I think things look pretty good. The payout ratio is a little bit too high in my opinion, but with the free cash flow increasing a lot lately, this problem might be solving itself. For now, I'm skipping this stock since I think there are better deals in the market. But remember to always do your own research and never fully trust on what I or other YouTubers say about the stock. I'm not a financial advisor and this content is just for entertaining purposes only. I hope you liked this video and I did bring some insights of the company to you. I'd really appreciate a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to get notified when I'm posting a new video. Thanks for watching and I will see you in my next video.